Hi, everyone. Uh, really happy to be here. Uh, uh, so my name is Manu. I represent this company called as G42. I'll talk about this company and also will try to talk about how can AI help supercharge the entire tech ecosystem here in the country. Uh, let me start by giving a quick introduction about what G42 is, who we are, what do we do. Uh, this is a company that not many people have heard of, not many people know about this company. It's a fairly young organization, started just about six years ago in 2018. Uh, and this company was born in Abu Dhabi. If you look at Middle East, or if you look at that entire region, six years ago it was very, it was unimaginable that a company from that region would become a large technology powerhouse across the world. But this has actually happened, and I'll tell a little bit about this journey. So this company started about six years ago in Abu Dhabi, in UAE. Uh, what do we do? We basically play in the entire value chain or ecosystem of AI, artificial intelligence. G42 is a holding company under which there are many operating companies. The three basic building blocks are data centers, supercomputers, or compute clusters, and AI models. So there are three companies. One company, Khazna, which is probably the largest data center provider in the region. Then we have Core42, which builds supercomputers and AI cloud. And then we have a company called as Inception, which builds AI models, which is the talk of the town, and everybody is keen to discuss more about it. And then we have industry verticals, like we have M42, which is the largest, which runs the largest genome sequencing program based out of Abu Dhabi. We have a company called as Bayanath, which is now Space42. That company is the second largest space tech company in the world. Uh, we have a company, Presight, which does AI analytics or video analytics. We have Astrotech, which does consumer AI, and a bunch of other companies. And all of them fall under this group called as G42. So these are the different companies that we think of. So starting with, again, Khasna, the largest data center company in the region. Core 42 actually owns one of the world's largest supercomputers, which is housed in California in US. It's a 32 exaflop machine. Inception, which builds AI models, and then all the industry verticals like Presight, M42, Bayanath, Analog, and few more. Uh, the company, not only the G42 as a group builds different AI solutions, but it also powers the entire ecosystem over there. So along with Mubadla, we formed this investment company called as MGX, which is a $100 billion company. And this company's objective is to advance artificial intelligence or deep tech across the world, not just in UAE, but across the world. We are backed by some of the, yeah, sorry. We are backed by some of the key investors. We have Silver Lake, we have Mubadla, and recently we got invested by Microsoft. In fact, Microsoft just invested 1.5 billion US dollars into G42. And this was part of a bigger partnership between the two companies, Microsoft and G42, to advance AI across the world, starting with UA. Some of our key partners, uh, we have Microsoft. In fact, the vice chairman of Microsoft sits on our board. We have a great relationship with OpenAI, with AWS, and with a bunch of technology companies across the world. Um, and while we're doing all of these things, building this technology, we also try and do something around sustainability, something around making the world a better place. So we just, just recently, two days ago, we announced a partnership with NVIDIA in advancing climate tech. Uh, we are setting up a new lab, a new infrastructure in the country, in UAE, to advance the climate tech uh, across the world. Uh, and this is something that we're really excited about. And our chairman, uh, Mr. Sheikh Tanun, was uh, rated as one of the top 100 key figures in the Time magazine when it comes to advancing AI and deep, te deep, te deep technology. So let's talk a little bit about what are we thinking of doing in India. Uh, so we started working on India plans about a year ago, end of last year, beginning of this year. And we said we want to start working on the three basic building blocks, which is building data centers, building supercomputers, and building AI models. So a great moment happened in the beginning of this year when Honorable Prime Minister Mr. Modi was visiting Abu Dhabi. And then in his presence, an MOU got signed between the two countries, UAE and India which spoke about three basic things. Building one of the largest data centers in the country. Uh, this is the most basic building blocks. All the great models that you guys are building, which will be sitting on a compute, which will be housed in a data center. 
Uh, and India, while it is the largest producer of mobile data in the, country, in the world, still, if you look at it from a data center capacity, it is still some, some way behind. So we said, can we help accelerate this? Can we build a very large scale data center in the country? Second is, all the great models that you guys are building, uh, it has to be built on some sort of a compute. Uh, so we said, can we help build one of the largest supercomputers in the country? And third is, can we help co-develop some of the LLMs, or large language models, here in India? And the third one, uh, which is what I'll be talking about today, is very important. Because this goes back to the point around equitable AI. Like Most of the models which have been built have been built in the Western world, which have been built using English as a language. And a lot of us here in the, in the, in the room, in this country, and not just here in India, but even across the world, we are much more comfortable with our native language, with our mother tongue, Hindi, Kannada, Telugu, Tamil, etc. But the realistic stat is 85%, while a billion people in India speak local languages, Hindi is the fourth most spoken language in the world. More than 85% of the digitized data in the world is in English. And very few models actually focus on doing a good job of either local languages or a combination of Hindi and English, or English and Kannada, or Hindi and Kannada, etc. And that's what we are trying to bridge with this equitable AI. So we launched a model in UAE College JS, which is perhaps the largest Arabic model. And then we recently announced our first Hindi model, which is called as Nanda. And this model is perhaps the biggest and the best model when it comes to Hindi and English, and also English, because a lot of us speak half Hindi, half English, or we type Hindi using English characters, so it does a really good job. It is a 13 billion parameter model, trained about 2.1 trillion tokens, including Hindi, and does a beautiful job of what we call as English. I wanted to do a demo here, but unfortunately, because of the size of presentation, we are showing a PDF and not a PPT, but would love to show you a demo, maybe on the sidelines. So this is the first model that we are launching. Uh, some of the screenshots, but again, happy to show a demo. And we believe models like this, not just Nanda, but many other models like this, can really get integrated with the fabric of technology in the country. Uh, these could really help supercharge large-scale technology initiatives like UPI, like ONDC, like Aadhaar. They can become a national LLM. But there can also be a lot of other use cases around healthcare. Somebody was talking about agriculture, um, around education. Just imagine people sitting in a small town, small village, small kasbah, outskirts of a big city like Bengaluru, and where there's not enough good quality healthcare uh, facilities available. They can, get be, they can be diagnosed or at least have a preliminary examination using a model like this. A lot of really nice applications can be built over there. So we are pretty happy, happy to uh, announce this and we'll be happy to take questions on this piece. But before I end, I just want to say we believe that there have been five big inventions. If you really look at the history of humanity, not like few last 10, 20 years, last few hundred years, but like really thousands of years, there have been five big inventions in the world. There was fire, there was wheel, there was steam engine, there was computers, and there was internet. And each one of them really changed the way all of us work, behave, etc. And the next big, and perhaps the biggest out of all of these, is going to be AI or artificial, artificial intelligence. And perhaps the biggest invention that we will see as humankind. So with this, thank you so much, guys. Uh, really excited to be here. Hi, Manu. How Hi. are you doing? Doing very well. Thank you so much. And thank you so much for being here and making time. I know you're a, one of the busiest CEO out there, you know, traveling and doing things and making it happen for India. That is and not true, but thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, one of the th interesting things, Manu, you explained about D42 Vision, what you are up to, and how AI is like the uh, biggest innovation that is going to change humankind, right? I want to understand why is it called G42? I'm, I'm sure the audience are aware of it, uh, but why is it called G42? What is the interesting thing behind that particular name? Any yeah. guesses why it's called as G42? Yes. So, <laughs> Hitchhiker's Guide to Galaxy, the answer to the universe is 42. So when the company was being formed six years ago, the founders basically thought of looking at an inspiration from somewhere, and they found this inspiration. So the group is called as G42 because group 42, it is a holding company, and under which there are multiple operating companies like Space42, focusing on space, M42, which focuses on healthcare and medical, uh, Core42, which focuses on building supercomputers. So different companies are called as 42 because of that reason.
Interesting. Okay. So, do you think G42 has the answer to the universe? I hope we will be a small catalyst in that. Amazing, amazing. So yeah, uh, Manu, we were discussing in the uh, back end. So I just, uh, there's a very interesting trend that is emerging in the AI industry. I'm sure all of us are aware of it, but somehow it's not been called upon, right? So uh, much like the global adoption of smartphones, right? Very unexpected, uh, but now almost everyone has one or two phones right there, right? And it's hard to imagine life without smartphones. So that is how it has been adopted uh, with us. And AI also seems to have this uh, similar path, I believe, uh, with companies like you know OpenAI releasing uh, updated models, uh, making older version redundant, right? Like I, I feel like all these companies, right? All your AI companies, they're kind of following like a smartphone model, uh, where much like you know how uh, new iPhones uh, replaces the old ones. You have like iPhone 16, uh, iPhone 11 becomes redundant. Same thing with. Uh, OpenAI, where they have GPT-4 uh, 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 or GPT-2 becoming redundant with new models like uh, O1 becoming like the latest one, right? Um, so I just want to know, Manu, like you have shaped the smartphone industry uh, during your time uh, previously, so uh, making smartphone accessible for the entire India, right? So as a CEO of G42 India, what is your strategy for you know making AI accessible to all of the country? Somewhere you mentioned uh, in your presentation as well. Uh, so are we expecting a similar trend here as well with kind of AI adoption as well, like that you saw in the smartphone adoption? Okay, <laughs> that's a long uh, question, but yeah. I, I think I'll try and answer it in two different parts. Part number one about the latest models being available, and hence the older model becomes obsolete. I think. Uh, the one big difference between smartphones and uh, AI models is if you look at smartphone OS, like the new Android version, new iOS version, I believe they're more incremental. They will add some new features. But what is happening with AI right now is each of the new version or new model which is coming is really exponential. It adds a lot more features, a lot more capability as compared to the previous one. And that in itself will help uh, drive adoption. Uh, we have seen it with our own the first model that we built, which was just like 13 billion and 30 and 70, and the capability of each of these new variants is like much higher than the, significantly higher than the previous one. So it will help drive adoption. When it comes to us and our plans for India, I think, um, uh, for example, Nanda, when we officially launched it, uh, so that's why the name Nanda. Now, what will it take to build world-class models that people here sitting in this room can adopt yeah. and start using? Uh, so. I, I think two, three points. Point number one, for building a great model, you need two things. Like All of you guys know this. You need like large compute clusters, Correct. compute power, and you need large data. Uh, specifically in, in, in context of India, uh, I think on both of these areas, we need to work as a country. I'm just talking about right now as a country, not as G42. Uh, if you look at some of the large compute clusters that we have, uh, some of the largest ones, like national level programs, they're still in PETA flops. And we believe today the world has moved not only to exaflop, like hundreds of exaflops. Like the kind of compute power that you require is significantly higher. So as a country, we will need to build significantly larger compute clusters, point number one. But the bigger problem, and that's an easier problem to solve, but the bigger problem to solve is how do we get good quality digitized data? Because if you look at most of the AI models, they what you feed is depends upon the quality of model depends upon what you feed the model. Like it's like feeding a baby, right? Yeah. So garbage in it, garbage in, garbage out. If you feed good quality data, the output would be good quality, right? Uh, and unfortunately, for most of the uh, Indic languages, uh, the digitized data is still significantly small. Uh, we spoke about Hindi, which is spoken, which is the fourth most spoken language. Uh, 600 million, 700 million people speaking that language, uh, fourth most spoken language. But if you look at the digitized data, is extremely low. So as a country, we need to make an initiative, and a lot of people are doing, like uh, Nandan's organization, I, many of the IITs, AI for Bharat, they're doing this initiative. We are trying to digitize. But I think as a country, we need to do a lot more. Uh, then we will be able to build really good quality models. Uh, and the last point I would say is people will start adopting these models, model like Nanda, model, any other model, when we have truly world-class model. Like people sitting in this room will not adopt a model just because it has been built by an Indian company or for India, et cetera, right? Or they will build, you start using these models when are truly world-class models and not just because they have an Indian tag attached to it, right? Correct. They have to do the right job. So if we build the right quality model using a great, like large compute clusters with large good quality data is when a lot of adoption of Indian models will come in.
So you're hopeful about that happening? Uh, I think it is not easy, but is it, it is, is it an easy thing? No, but it is possible, definitely yes. In Amazing. Okay, let's uh, say, uh, how would you explain uh, this particular model called Nanda, right? And what you're building uh, to a four-year-old uh, daughter or a kid there, like you, you yourself have a daughter of four, yeah, who's four-year. How would you explain Nanda to her? Like, Okay, so <laughs> if I have to explain to my four-year-old kid, I would just say it's a, it's a magic robot, which is as knowledgeable as your papa or mama. Uh, just like you can ask anything to your papa and mama, and they will answer it. Uh, th this model basically answers something similar. Uh, but if I have to answer it, explain it to a 10-year-old, then maybe I'll do something slightly more evolved, which is I will say, think of it as a computer which has knowledge of all the books, Got all the, everything it has read through all the books, and it is a lot more knowledgeable. And it can help you with a lot of day-to-day -day tasks. You can ask him about like lessons on swimming, and you can ask him about translating from Hindi to English. You can ask him to actually do work. Like if you do a, give a presentation, you can actually ask it to uh, give a presentation or help you prepare a presentation. So it's your, it's your digital uh, assistant in a way to 10-year-old, but it is difficult to explain to a four-year-old. For four-year-old, it will be, it's just a magic robot. Magic robot, okay. That's an interesting one. Uh, and also, uh, Manu, I just, uh, a lot of these conversations are shaping, right? So you've been in the smartphone industry for a very long time. Uh, and we have uh, one of the uh, advocate, AI advocate, like uh, Jan Lee Kun, who said that smartphones would be redundant in the next decade. Uh, what are your thoughts on that in terms of how AI is adopting and you know evolving? Uh, will that be possible in the coming uh, months? Within smartphones? Yeah, within smartphones, the evolution will happen, but would smartphone be redundant? I'm, I know we are using oh, smart smartphone. Smartphone be redundant, redundant. okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, you're putting me on a spot. Uh, uh, I don't think smartphones will be redundant. Uh, like all of us still use smartphones. Like as Correct. you mentioned, like everybody uses one or two smartphones uh, in this day. Like for anything and everything, you need a smartphone. But I do think that the pace of innovation on smartphones over the last few years has somewhat slowed down or may maybe not keeping it to the pace of what it, it is required. Uh, and this is my personal opinion, right? Not uh, like, <laughs> I'm not commenting on any particular sure. company. Yeah. Uh, but I think that pace of innovation could have been higher. And probably one of the things which will help bring this pace of innovation in, in things like smartphones or laptops or any of these gadgets is, is AI, right? Uh, you will see in next few years AI being an integral part of anything and everything that the gadgets do. And you will be able to do a lot more work using using your phone, thanks to AI. Uh, they could be fo like look at ten years ago when we used to have I do not know if you remember there were phones like old Nokia phones. We used to yeah. call them smart, but they were not really smart. Like yeah. my first phone was like N72, and today's world you would just call it as a feature phone. It was a basic feature phone with some like access to internet, and we used to call it smartphone. But then the true smartphones came in. Yeah. I think there would be next generation when. All these gadgets would basically see uh, being centered around AI, Correct. and that would be the next set of ev evolution that will happen in these gadgets. Got it. And, and uh, looking at the evolution that AI is happening, what are some of your biggest bets in the coming years? Like, say, next biggest bets in terms of uh, what is going to happen in the AI domain? What are your some of, some of your biggest bets in the biggest coming? Biggest bets. Yes. Yeah. Uh, from a use case perspective, I think. Uh, I can think of two. Uh, one is, I think there's a very famous meme floating on internet which says that I don't want AI to write my poem and my essays while I do dishes and laundry, whatever, right? I want AI to do my laundry and yeah. dishes. So I think the first big thing would come in is when AI gets integrated with real life uh, things that we do, like with robotics or with cars or with many other things that we really touch and feel in the world. Correct. So a lot of manual work that we do actually gets fully automated and is done by AI or robots. I think that would be the one huge use case when each one of us will start adopting it and start use, using it. I think the second one, I think in a more short term, I think that is still slightly mid term. I think in the short term, if you think about most of us, especially in countries like India, or maybe other countries also, Indonesia, et cetera, is, is uh, the use of vernacular language or local language, right? Uh, and a lot of us, want to use speech to speech. Correct. Uh, we don't want to use text, especially if you go to small towns and villages, right? And today, uh, majority of the models still use, like, convert speech into text and then get an answer in text and then relate back in speech. 
but the work is happening on speech to speech kind of models which can be much faster much more adaptive and i think when that happens that could be the first big moment for a lot of people like a billion people in india to start using ai and from a mid term perspective when ai gets integrated with robots and like day to day life amazing so uh, manu if you could go on a dinner date with uh, one of the uh, celebrity figures um, who would, would it be at this particular moment like Uh, so many come to my mind uh, okay of course some of the big visionaries like uh, jensen like elon musk uh, and many others but it's a tough one but if i have to choose one maybe jensen huang uh, uh, he is somebody like i really i look up to and admire like look at how he built this company and then like for decades like he was an underdog fighting it out and his big moment came when ai became so powerful and or uh, became so uh, widely used over the last few years uh, would love to go and meet him and i think the question that i would ask him is all those decades when he was working very hard correct how did he maintain that perseverance and that is so important for all of us in this room right uh, when we are building companies when we are building products it is not about like 6 months or 1 year or 2 years uh, but we have to literally think about what can happen in next 10 years 20 years from a long term perspective how do you build sustainable businesses so what did he think 20 years ago did he really think that this big moment will come yeah when nvidia will become like one of the biggest technology ai giants in the world like i would want to learn from him what was his thought process not now but like 10 years 20 years ago and i think all of us can learn from that perfect and elon musk like yeah elon 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 musk oh elon oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, i i think he's been up like he's tried to do things that nobody else thought was doable right and he's running so many different companies across the world like uh, sometimes things about it like the companies that i have run uh, we are so much bogged down by day to day stuff some fire fighting is happening some customer issues are there uh, new product has to be launched or some new thing has to be happened and we are so bogged down by day to day stuff and he's running some of the largest companies and he's a ceo of multiple companies right so i would want to learn from him like just how does he manage his calendar like i think it's a <laughs> you need an ai to just do that job of managing his calendar but how is he able to take out time like for so many different companies and be so actively involved in each one of them like i can't think of any other example in the world and that's something that i would learn from, would want to learn from him so i, I hopefully uh, think that you'll meet them very soon sure. uh, and uh, also in india like who is uh, like if you have to go meet someone or fix the next meeting uh who would that person be for you in indian uh, in indian context yeah, yeah uh from an ai perspective yes from an ai perspective i think a lot of people are doing great job in the country uh the one person that i look up to is uh, nandan yes i think he has done a great job when it comes to aadhar when it comes to upi ondc and the work that he is doing with people plus ai and and occ uh, so i have always looked up to him we actually met him some time ago to talk about our india plans and take his inputs but yeah i would love to uh, want to continue to stay engaged with him and take his guidance i think he's definitely a father figure for many of us amazing uh, thank you manu that is your ai human uh, manu jain for us